Bill and Ben are tank engine twins. Each has four wheels, a tiny chimney and dome, and a small squat cab. Their trucks are filled with china clay. It is needed for pottery, paper, paint, and many other things. The twins are now kept busy pulling the trucks for engines on the main line, and for ships in the harbor. One morning, they arranged some trucks and went away for more. They returned to find them all gone. The twins were most surprised. Their drivers examined a patch of oil. That's a diesel, they said. It's a wattle, asked Bill. A diesel, I think, replied Ben. There's a notice about them in our shed. Coughs and sneezles sped diseasels. You had a cough in your smoke box yesterday. It's your fault the diesel came. It isn't. It is. Stop arguing, you two, laughed their drivers. Let's go and rescue our trucks. Bill and Ben were horrified. But the diesel will magic us away like the trucks. He won't magic us, replied their drivers. We'll more likely magic him. Listen, he doesn't know your twins, so we'll take away your names and numbers, and then this is what we'll do. Puffing hard, the twins set off on their journey to find the diesel. They were looking forward to playing tricks on him. Creeping into the yard, they found the diesel on a siding with the missing trucks. Ben hid behind, but Bill went boldly alongside. The diesel looked up. Do you mind? Yes, said Bill, I do. I want my trucks, please. These are mine, said the diesel. Go away. Bill pretended to be frightened. You're a big bully, he whimpered. You'll be sorry. He ran back and hid behind the trucks on the other side. Ben now came forward. Truck stealer, this Ben. He ran away too. Bill took his place. This went on and on till the diesel's eyes nearly popped out. Stop, you're making me giddy. The two engines gazed at him. Are there two of you? Yes, we're twins. I might have known it. Just then, Edward bustled up. Bill and Ben, why are you playing here? We're not playing, protested Bill. We're rescuing our trucks, squeaked Ben. Even you don't take our trucks without asking, but this diesel did. There's no cause to be rude, said Edward severely. This engine is a Metropolitan Vickers diesel electric type too. The twins were abashed. We're sorry, Mr. Uh, never mind, the diesel smiled. Call me Boko. I'm sorry I didn't understand about the trucks. That's all right then, said Edward. Now off you go, Bill and Ben. Fetch Boko's trucks, then you can take this lot. There's no real harm in them, he said to Boko, but they're maddening at times. Boko chuckled. Maddening, he said, is the word. Thomas's branch line is important, and so is Edwards, but their track and bridges are not so strong as those on the main line. The fat controller does not allow the heavier main line engines like Gordon to run on them. But one day, the way Gordon was talking, you would have thought the fat controller had given this order for quite another reason. It's not fair, grumbled Gordon. What isn't fair, asked Edward. Letting branch line diesels pull main line trains. Never mind, Gordon, I'm sure Boko will let you pull his trucks sometime. Gordon spluttered. I won't pull Boko's dirty trucks. I won't run on branch lines. Why not? It would be a nice change. The fat controller would never approve, huffed Gordon. Branch lines are vulgar. Gordon puffed away. Edward chuckled and followed him to the station. Every evening, the two engines pull two fast trains from the station. Gordon always leaves first with an express for the main line. Edward follows five minutes later with his train for the branch line. Usually everything runs like clockwork, but tonight there was trouble. A lady in a green floppy hat was saying goodbye to a friend. It was nearly time for Gordon to start. The fireman looked back towards the guard's van and saw something green waving. Right away, mate! He thought the guard had waved his flag. Gordon started, leaving luggage, his passengers and the guard all standing on the platform. Everyone was very surprised and cross. To make matters worse, by the time Gordon had been stopped and brought back, Edward was already late with his train. So now he set off first. But the signalman at the junction wasn't told about the change. By mistake, he sent Edward along the main line. Gordon was sent along the branch and arrived cold and cross on one of the sidings near the harbour. Next morning, Bill and Ben peeped into the yard. There were no trucks for them. They didn't mind that. Teasing Gordon would be much better fun. What's that? Asked Bill. Shh, whispered Ben. It's Gordon. It looks like Gordon, but it can't be. Gordon never comes on the branch lines. He thinks them vulgar. Gordon pretended he hadn't heard them. If it isn't Gordon, said Ben, it's just a pile of old iron, which we'd better take to the scrapyard. No, Bill, this lot's useless for scrap. We'll take it to the harbour and dump it in the sea. Gordon was alarmed. I am Gordon. Stop, stop. When Boko suddenly arrived, Gordon thought him the most beautiful sight he had ever seen. Boko, my dear engine, save me! Boko quickly sized up the situation and threatened to take away the trucks he had brought for Bill and Ben. This made the twins behave at once. Gordon thought he was wonderful. Those little demons, how do you do it? Oh well, said Boko, it's just a knack. Gordon still believes that Boko saved his life, but we know the twins were only teasing, don't we? The bus was giving some visitors a tour of the island of Sodor. It was their last afternoon, and Edward was preparing to take them to meet Bill and Ben. He found it hard to start the heavy train. Did you see him straining? asked Henry. Positively painful, remarked James. Just pathetic, grunted Gordon. He should give up and be preserved before it's too late. Shut up, burst out Duck. You're all jealous. Edward's better than any of you. You're right, Duck, said Boko. Edward's old, but he'll surprise us all. I've done it, we're off! I've done it, we're off! said Edward as he finally puffed out of the station. 
Gil and Ben were delighted to see the visitors. They loved being photographed. Later, they took the party to the China Clayworks in a break van special. Everyone had a splendid time. The visitors were most impressed. Then Edward took the visitors home. On the way, the weather changed. Wind and rain buffeted him. The standing gear failed, and his fireman rode in front, dropping sand on the rails by hand. Suddenly, Edward's wheels slipped fiercely. Did a shrieking crack. Something broke. The crew inspected the damage. Repairs took some time. One of your crankpins broke, Edward, said his driver. We've taken your side rods off. Now you're like an old-fashioned engine. Can you get these people home? They must start back tonight. I'll try, sir, promised Edward. Edward puffed and pulled his hardest, but his wheels kept slipping and he could not start the heavy train. The passengers were anxious. Driver, fireman and guard went along the train, making adjustments between the coaches. We've loosened the couplings, Edward. Now you can pick your coaches up one by one, just as you do with trucks. That will be much easier, said Edward. Come on, he puffed and moved cautiously forward. The first coach moving helped to start the second, and the second helped the third. I've done it, I've done it, puffed Edward. Steady boy, warned his driver. Well done, boy. You've got them, you've got them. And he listened happily to Edward's steady beat as he forged slowly but surely ahead. At last battered, weary, but unbeaten, Edward steamed in. Henry was waiting for the visitors with the special train. Beep, beep. The fat controller angrily pointed to the clock, but excited passengers cheered and thanked Edward. His driver and fireman. Duck and Boko saw to it that Edward was left in peace. Gordon and James remained respectfully silent. Thank you.